To get a better understanding of routing algorithms, let's have a closer look to a few of them. And let's start with isolated routing. Isolated routing is a very simple routing algorithm. And this routing algorithm is based only on locally available information. Information of the router. So about his uh, output gates, input gates, length of, uh, length of queues, uh, or state of neighbors. An important example of this isolated routing algorithms is flooding. Flooding and more uh, sophisticated, the selective flooding. A third, uh, third example of the isolated routing uh, algorithms is the so-called hot potato routing. Let's start with, have a closer look to flooding. Flooding is a very simple idea. Flooding is the idea that every, arrive, uh, every arriving packet is forwarded over all other ports of the router. So in this way, of course, there is a multiplication of the packet. Because if the router has five ports, six ports, uh, and then the packet is forwarded over all the other ports, so the packet is forwarded over four, five ports, so instead of one packet, now in this router, the router forwards five packets. So this is a problem, and uh, this uh, get generates an extremely high network load. One can think to reduce this a little bit uh, by giving to each packet a hop counter, hop counter starting with a maximum network diameter and is decremented by each hop. So each packet maximally uh, goes so many, is forwarded so many steps through the network. Or one can give the packet a timestamp, uh, but uh, the idea is that uh, the packets are sent through all possible passes, and the optimal one is uh, one of these passes. With the selective flooding, one uh, tries to do something against the biggest disadvantage of the flooding, the high number of uh, multiplication of uh, data forwarded. And here the idea is that every arriving packet is forwarded uh, over all ports of the router that show approximately in the right direction. So not to forward the packet over all other ports, but only over those that uh, show in the, uh, in, a, in the right direction. Here, compared to the flooding, to the simple flooding, for the selective flooding, the router needs some information about the structure of the network to determine what is the right direction. So the selective uh, flooding is more complicated, but of course uh, the multiplication, the uh, creation of, of uh, transportation, uh, uh, transportation demand is decreased. Why is such a very simple approach is helpful? As well, flooding as selective flooding are usually not practical because of this high network load which uh, is generated by them. But such type of approach makes sense, for example, in a military use. In a military use, uh, where is a high suspectability of disturbance. So uh, in next situation, this path may be disturbed, the good one. So there is another way the uh, package can find. Another uh, application uh, of this uh, flooding idea is uh, for the distribution of updates. Updates for distributed databases to uh, guarantee the synchronicity. And here the idea is there are many uh, computers that need to get this information. So it is not the big problem that this, there is such a high uh, multiplication of the number of packets. But when we evaluate, then we have to say that flooding always finds the shortest route. <laughs> Think a simple proof for this, uh, for this uh, assertion. And the simple proof uh, only consists in the remark that if you send packets 
along the same packet along all possible paths, then of course you will send it also on the shortest path. And the shortest path is of course the one the packet uh, reach at the earliest moment its destination. Let's have a closer look to another uh, routing algorithm uh, belonging to the family of isolated routing, and that's hot potato routing. Yes, you understand potato. The potato and the hot potato, and the idea is like if you get a hot potato and you you try to get it away because it's so hot. You try to get it away on the fastest way. Exactly this is the idea of the hot potato routing. And here the router attempts to get rid of the arriving packet in the fastest way possible. Why are that out output with the currently shortest queue? So the fast way to uh, send out to forward the packet. What is the problem with this approach? The problem with this approach, uh, of course, is that the packet very seldom finds the shortest way and often takes detours. Of course, because uh, selecting the output port for reason of shortest queue has nothing to do, uh, is no, uh, not at all a kind of guarantee that this packet reach its destination on the shortest way possible. Another problem with this approach is the increased network congestion. The packets continue to be sent even if there is already a congestion uh, uh, of packets on the route to the receiver. So there is no uh, information about the network situation and uh, uh, often it happens that this hot potato approach uh, increases the network congestion. Now let's look to another family of routing algorithm. Now uh, let's have a closer look to the distance vector routing. Distance vector routing, the corresponding graph uh, um, uh, theoretical algorithms uh, are designed by Bellman and Ford uh, or Ford Falkerson. Uh, so in the literature you find many names for this uh, uh, simple routing idea. And the simple routing idea is an idea now of the decentralized dynamic routing methods. And the idea behind is that every router calculates its routing table locally. Okay, this was also the case in the uh, this was also the case in the isolated routing mill. But the computer, the router shares its knowledge with its neighbor routers. The reason is to give them information about the own knowledge of the network and to receive their knowledge about the situation in the network. So routing information is periodically exchanged. Exchanged so that after a certain time every router gets information and best pass information to all the targets in the network by receiving the knowledge of the network by the other routers. Next slide, we will discuss this in more detail. Uh, here we uh, uh, want to mention that through the periodic repetition of this, uh, of this approach, of this exchange for information and of this recalculation of the routing table, all routers can adapt also to changes in the network. For example, if a connection fails uh, because a router has an error or uh, because of other reasons. Here, uh, the question now is what kind of information is exchanged with the neighbor routers? And the information that's changed is the so-called distance vector. So here, the uh, uh, the routing table is enlarged by a, a new entry. This is a distance vector. And the distance vector gives the number of hops from, uh, is from the uh, current router to the destination. The routing algorithm can also be used with other metrics, but to make it simple, we uh, consider the, uh, uh, the next hop metrics. 
the information about the distance uh, to the uh, to the destination uh, or to the different routers it is stored in form of a vector which is called the uh, distance vector now let's have a closer look how this distance vector routing is working in the center is a computation of the distance, the distance of a router to a destination. And this information is, uh, uh, is, par is uh, part, is written inside the distance vector. Such destination depend on underlying metric. So what's needed uh, if we apply such a distance vector routing algorithm is a routing metric. And what we uh, do here is let's consider the next hop uh, metric. That is, the length of a path from router A to router B is the number of intermediate hops. So it's the length of the path in the graph that's modeling our wide area network. In practical application, instead one could use bandwidth or transition time or others as, as a metric, but every time the idea is the same, and so here we will uh, use this uh, routing metric. Now, in the distance vector, uh, all the information is, uh, all the distances are stored from our router to the different, uh, to the different uh, destinations in the network. So the distance vector is the knowledge a router has about the network. And the neighbor router has another distance vector. It is its knowledge about the network. And what the, uh, uh, what the routers do uh, when they apply this distance vector routing, they exchange that information about distance vector. And uh, what happens, for example, in the following situation. Our router, router B, gets information, uh, gets uh, distance vector information from router A. And uh, the distance information says that from A, router Z, the, the destination set has a certain distance. And now B can compute how far A is away plus the distance uh, to set from A and compare this, can compare this number with its own entrance, uh, with its own distance entrance to Z. And if this is smaller than this, then Z, uh, the distance vector uh, from B has to be, uh, has to be uh, uh, recomputed. To show this, let's assume we have Z and we have this pass uh, 10, so the distance 10 to the router A and then to router B we have 1. And let's assume that the old entrance in B, the distance uh, entrance in B was 14. Now B gets the distance vector from A. And in this distance vector, B can recognize that E has only distance 10 to Z. So if B would send a packet to Z via A, then the length would be instead of 14, the length would be 1 plus 10, 11. So now B has to recompute and has to replace the 14 by 11, the new distance. And this are doing all the neighbored, uh, the neighbored routers to each other. And in this way, from time to time, the information uh, about the network is adapted uh, to the current situation. This uh, distance vector routing was of uh, large practical importance because it was the first routing method that was used in the ARPANET. It was standardized, it was standardized as the so-called routing information protocol, the RIP protocol, and uh, this was standardized in the internet standard RFC 1058. But there was a problem with the distance vector routing. The problem was that it's very slow uh, converging uh, to the uh, real situation of the network. Let's assume there is a router far away. In each step, neighbor router are interchanging information and makes this recomputation. So 
this router has to wait a long time distance uh, at, as it gets the information from its neighbors uh, how to recompute the uh, how to recompute the distance vector and its uh, its routing table. And for that reason, in '97, the uh, the distance vector uh, routing was replaced by the following algorithm by the link state routing algorithm. The link state routing algorithm uh, is also a decentralized dynamic routing method. Here, the router exchange information about the status of the connection to its neighbors and uh, not uh, the complete uh, distance vectors. There is a big difference to the, uh, to the uh, distance uh, routing is that in this case of the link state routing, the routing information is broadcasted to all the other routers. So not step by step to its neighbors, uh, transmitted to its neighbors, it's sent in one step to all the routers, uh, the, the new information is sent to all uh, routers uh, in the area. So in this way, these routers uh, may adapt much faster to a change uh, in the situation of a network. This link state routing was uh, standardized as an internet standard in RFC uh, 2328 and in RFC 5340. Uh, it was updated for the new uh, internet protocol, the internet protocol IPv6. The intellectual basis of this uh, link state routing uh, comes from the Dijkstra algorithm, uh, which uh, implement or which is based on the principle of shortest past first. <laughs>